everybody and welcome back to Art à la carte. This video is going to be a crash course beginner's guide to drawing digitally. I'm going to show you the ins and outs to begin sketching, inking, and coloring your art pictures. If you're looking for something that has a little bit more in-depth information step by step, I have a whole playlist where I go through all the different features and I'll leave a link to the Drawing Digital 101 playlist at the end of this video. So the first question that I get answered a lot is what software do I use? Uh, for many years, I used Photoshop. And then just recently, within the last year or two, I switched over to Clip Studio Paint. And I love this software. One, it's way more affordable. This software has all the things that I needed to do as far as drawing and even some animation. I will have a link to their software in the description box below. This is not a sponsored video. It's just what I like to use. So this right here is what is called kind of like the workstation and you can totally customize this however you want but let me show you a couple of features that you're going to want to take notice of so the first feature over on this side these are where all of your tools are it's where you're going to be your drawing tools filling color all those kind of things in this section each of these tools may have sub tools for it down at the bottom, I have my colors, so I have a color wheel and color swatches. Up at the top, you're going to find more of your editing buttons for, you know, saving and copy, paste, all that kind of stuff. And then over on the right-hand side, you'll have some additional tools. This, again, totally customizable. For me, I like to have my view window and my layers. Those are the tools that I use the most. Now, speaking of layers, let's talk a little bit about layers. So think of layers as transparent art paper. So on one layer, I might draw a picture of a flower. If I take and place a layer underneath this first one, I can add color to this. I can make any kind of marks underneath it, and it's not going to affect the actual layer above it. So here I can add color to my flower. As I'm coloring in these, you're going to see the color lays down. I can see it through the flower, but it doesn't go over my original marks. So there are two separate layers, but because they're both set to transparent, you don't see anything except for the actual marks that you put on them. Now, the very bottom layer is your, your base colored paper layer. It's my white. You can change that to whatever color you'd like. I like to make it white because it reminds me of paper. So let's get a little crazy. Let's add a layer on top. So now we have three layers. So this top layer now, if I draw on this layer, it's going to cover up everything that I've already made on the previous two layers, but it's not going to change them. It just covers it up. Like if you put a clear window pane on top of another window pane and you spray paint that window pane, you can't see through it, but it doesn't get paint on the window panes below it. So I can go back and erase those blue marks. It's going to erase them on that layer, but it doesn't erase anything on any of the other layers. So why is layers helpful? Let's take a closer look. I'm going to go ahead and show you the process of sketching, inking, and coloring a drawing. And that way you can see how layers really benefit me. Now, before I get into the whole sketching and inking process, let me talk a little bit about specific tools that I use. I'm always getting questions of what my favorite drawing tool is for digital drawing. So let me break them down. In Clip Studio Paint, there is the pencil tool. Now, again, each of these tools have sub tools. I'll kind of show those. So for the pencil tool, depending on which one you choose, will give a thicker or a thinner line, contrast line, more texture. I myself like the rough pencil. It's closest to like a real pencil. Choosing different colors on the color wheel, it's going to give you, you know, color pencil look or a harder or softer lead. And again, there are so many different features that you can tweak and change. You can make this pencil look like any kind of pencil out there. But let's go ahead and put this up against like an ink pen. So let me go ahead and grab the ink pen and do the same kind of swatch marks on that. You're going to see that it doesn't have that layering effect like the pencil does. It's all the same shade of color. I can, with the pen tool, get that really thin line. Because I'm using a drawing tablet, I can get pressure sensitivity. Now, if I use the marker tool, there is no pressure sensitivity. It's all the same thickness of line as if I was drawing with a marker. Let's look at one more tool, the pastel tool. This is kind of like a chalk. If you guys have been watching my videos where I talk about arting for a job, you'll notice I do a uh, cartoon sketches of myself in like a chalkboard form. This is some of the tools that I'm using. It's this kind of chalky pastel look. All right, let's jump back over and work on this sketch. So I'm going to create one layer. This is going to be my sketch layer. I'm going to sketch out a figure. I'm going to use a pencil. I'm going to have it on a medium dark 
lead so I can nicely see it, but I'm just going to sketch like I would sketch with a pencil on paper. While I am sketching this out, let me go ahead and answer another question I get asked a lot, and that is, what do I draw on? So I use a Wycom Cintiq 13 inch HD. That's a huge mouthful. I will leave a link to that in the description box below. Again, this is not sponsored. I'd love for it to be sponsored, but it's not sponsored. There are a ton of different drawing tablets out there. I've reviewed several. Some of them are not as expensive as others. So if you're interested in getting a drawing tablet for yourself, I would definitely look around, shop around, and decide what works best for you. All right, so I have finished my sketch layer, and now I'm going to begin inking this in. So I'm gonna create a brand new layer on top of the sketch layer, and this will be my inking layer. I'm gonna switch my tools from a pencil tool to the pen tool and grab my dark black color. Again, you could ink in any color. That's what's so fabulous about drawing digitally is you have a wealth of colors and choices. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the pen tool. I love this pen tool because, again, with my drawing tablet, I get that thick, thin pressure sensitivity. So the harder I push on my tablet, the thicker my line is going to be. If I draw very lightly, the thinner the line is going to be. So it really imitates an ink pen. So if all of these tools really are just great imitations of regular pencils and regular ink pens and paper, why don't I just do regular pencils and paper and ink pens? Why even draw digitally? And the answer for that is I do both. I love drawing traditional art. And I love digital art. With digital art, I don't have that underlining fear of wasting products. I don't have to go and buy a hundred different shades of ink. I can just test things out here. And there are some amazing artists out there that create digitally. So whether you choose to create digitally or traditionally, no, it still takes skill and practice. Both forms of art are going to take time and practice. Let's move on to coloring. So now I'm going to go ahead and erase everything that is on my sketch line. You don't have to, I just get rid of it because I don't need my sketch anymore. I erase my sketches and now the sketch layer becomes my color layer. You could, if you wanted to, create a whole new layer to be your color layer. But the important thing is, is the color layer needs to be below the ink layer. Once it's below, I can use my fill bucket, which is like a little paint bucket, and fill in. And if you have your settings set the right way, it will fill inside those marks. Over here is a very tiny little button that is called the lock transparency. And I have to tell you, any little buttons on your software, vital that you play around with them, find out what they do, because some of them do amazing things. So the lock transparency, when you hit that, anything that has a mark on that layer, you can change. You can erase it, you can add color to it. But if there is no mark on that transparency, it's not gonna let a mark be put on there. So I want to color this guy's super suit. So I've put the lock transparency. I can run my marker across it all I want, but the red color is only going to go on the blue marks. It's not going to go outside that blue mark. All right, so the last tip I want to talk to you guys about is a quick way to create shading and shadowing. So once I've got my coloring down the way I want, I'm going to create another layer. This layer now is going to be above the coloring layer, but yet still below the ink layer. And I'm going to use this one tool that's called the lasso tool. It's also called the marquee tool. You see it right there. I'm going to create a shape with this tool and using my fill bucket, I can fill in that shape that I create. So it's going to give these really great contrasts and I'm going to create my cast shadows and just that the look that I want. Because this is on its own separate layer, it's very easy for me to go back and erase things that I don't want without disrupting or hurting my inking layer or my color layer. Now, the reason that I hid my color layer, I didn't erase it, I just hid it, was because uh, the color layer underneath it may interfere with how the fill bucket lays down the color. So just so that it doesn't just color in the red part or the yellow part, I went ahead and just hit that little eyeball button next to that layer. It just hides it from my view, but doesn't erase it. So when I'm ready to bring back the colored suit, I just have to hit that little eyeball again and 
Boop, there it is. Now it's a pretty harsh contrast right now. So I'm going to go up here to this little tabby thing. And this is the opacity meter for that layer. So I made sure that I've highlighted the layer that I want to change the opacity. And I bring that little lever down and it lightens everything up and creates a really cool shadow. So obviously these are just a few things that you can do while creating digital art. There is so, so much stuff. In fact, way more than I even covered in my Drawing Digitally 101 series. Please let me know in the comment section below and I will see about creating more videos to tackle those topics as well in upcoming videos. So if you're brand new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And as always, thanks for hanging out with me. God bless you guys and we'll see you in another art video. Bye-bye.